Hello, I'm Wyndham Everett Estates Chief Economist Matthew Gardner, and welcome to the final episode of Mondays with Matthew for 2023. Now, this is the time of year when I, I should be thinking about what I'm going to buy my family for Christmas, but, well, you know me, I've been spending all my time wondering what the real estate market will look like in 2024. So, to that end, here's my forecast for the US housing market. It's possible that some of you may remember uh, that this was the number one on my list last year, and so far, my forecast was spot on. And the reason why I'm bringing it to your attention for a second year is because the market actually performed better in 2023 than I had expected. And this has led some to suggest that stubbornly high home values, along with significantly higher mortgage rates, are likely to lead the market to implode in 2024. But I find that highly implausible. I'll be the first to admit that last year's forecast for rates to have started dropping earlier in 2023 and faster than they have was not accurate. Why? While the US economy proved to be significantly more resilient to the Fed, who were raising interest rates at the fastest pace in over 40 years. And this has led the Federal Reserve to keep borrowing rates higher and likely for longer, as they continue to try and tame inflation. But the data I'm looking at today, well, it shows inflation and the economy in general starting to slow. And this leads me to believe that mortgage rates have peaked, that they will continue to ease as we move through 2024. That said, I don't see rates dropping below 6% by the end of the year. Now, I know this might sound depressing, but I'd still be far happier with a 6% mortgage and today's rate of close to 7.5%. Last year, I suggested the number of sellers listing their homes in 2023 would be extremely low, and that forecast was correct. In 2024, I expect that we will see a modest increase in the number of sellers, but many will still be hesitant to sell and lose their current mortgage rate, which is well below where we are today. In fact, the most recent data I have shows that 80% of mortgaged homeowners have a mortgage rate of at or below 5%. But although they may not be inclined to sell right now, as and when rates fall to within 1% to 1.5% of the rate they currently hold, I believe that those who have been holding off will look seriously at listing their homes for sale. Most forecasters suggested that sale prices would fall in 2023, but that was not the case. The lack of inventory in the marketplace acted to prop up home values, and as I found it unlikely we would see either a meaningful increase in the number of homes for sale or significantly higher foreclosures, well, I didn't expect to see prices drop in 2023, and I'm not looking for them to fall in 2024 either. However, growth will come in at a very modest 1%, lower than has been seen in many years, but growth all the same. During the pandemic, there were a number of more affordable markets across the country that experienced very significant price increases, which were then followed by significant post-pandemic price declines. Now, I expected home prices in those areas to take longer to recover than the rest of the nation, but I've been quite frankly very surprised by how quickly prices have recovered, with most markets having either matched their historic highs or getting very close to it even in the face of remarkably high borrowing costs. In 2024, I expect prices to match or exceed their 2022 highs in the vast majority of metropolitan areas across the country. Although new home construction remains tepid, builders are still benefiting from the lack of supply in the resale market. And they're taking greater market share, not only of sales, but of listings too. Now, although this might sound like a big positive for builders, it's coming at a cost. A recent report published by the National Association of Home Builders suggested that 32% of builders have been cutting home prices, and a full 62% of them were providing sales incentives, such as mortgage rate buy-downs. Now, although material costs have softened, it remains very hard for builders to deliver as much housing as is needed by the market. With home prices not contracting and the pace of borrowing costs far exceeding the pace of income growth, affordability will likely erode further in 2024. Now, of course, 
there are ways that affordability could improve, but it would require either a significant drop in home values, a significant drop in mortgage rates, a significant increase in household incomes, or a combination of all three. But I'm afraid I find this very unlikely. And the hardest hit due to the affordability or lack of it will be our younger first-time home buyers. And they're going to continue to find it very challenging when it comes to getting their foot on the first rung of the housing ladder. In last year's forecast, I suggested that governments, both national and local, I would start to take housing in general and affordability specifically more seriously. And that has certainly been the case, with several states enacting new land use policies aimed at releasing developable land. Naturally, I support these efforts, but I expect even more to be done in 2024. Specifically, I'm hoping that cities and counties not only continue easing their restrictive land use policies, but also continue to streamline the permitting process and take a close look at the fees that they're charging builders. These costs are passed on directly to the home buyer, which further impacts affordability. More needs to be done, and I'm hopeful that many markets across the country will step up to the plate and make some quantifiable changes. Many expected that the end of forbearance would bring a veritable tsunami of homes to market, but they failed to appear. At its peak, almost 1 in 10 homes was in the programme, but today that's fallen to well below 1%. That said, I do expect foreclosure starts to pick back up, although I have to say that they remained well below pandemic levels. Now, I do expect delinquency levels to increase rising in 2024, but they will simply be returning to the long-term average and are certainly not a cause for concern. 2023 will likely be remembered as the year when sales activity was at its lowest level since 2008, following the bursting of the housing bubble. As I explained earlier, I believe that we will see the number of existing homes coming to market improve modestly in 2024, which, in concert with mortgage rates starting with a 6 rather than a 7 for most of the year, should allow existing home sales to rise to around 4.4 million units. However, there will still be more demand than supply, and this will mean that owners will still have the upper hand in 2024. So, there you have it, my forecast for the housing market in 2024. I think you'll agree that 2023 was quite a year for real estate, Lots of ups and downs, but we made it through. And I'm curious, what do you think will be the biggest stories in the housing market in 24? I'd love to hear. Please leave your comments in the comments section below. And finally, I'd like to take this opportunity to wish all of you a very happy holiday season. Please stay safe out there. I'm looking forward to visiting with you all again in the new year. Bye now.